Disclaimer, in the video you are about to watch, you'll see me and my wife and my two greyhound dogs take a road trip. This video was recorded months and months and months ago. In fact, it was recorded last fall. So please don't be concerned. We are staying at home quarantine as we're supposed to be. We did not violate any orders and we did not put anybody at risk. So there's no need to be concerned or any reason to leave me comments below telling me that I should be staying at home and quarantining. This was recorded a long time ago. Now that we've got that out of the way, enjoy the video. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. Thank you for joining me as we continue the story of the rebuilt 2017 Ford Police Interceptor. I have been working over the last few days, as you already saw, on getting things ready, wrapping it up. As you know, in the last video I mentioned, I'm getting ready to go on a road trip, and I was a little concerned about whether or not I'd be able to get the Interceptor ready in time uh, for the road trip, but I'm pretty sure I've got it, so I'm working on the last few things. Uh, as you saw, I've been working over the last few days to get these things buttoned up, and today I'm going to be doing the last couple of things before the trip. Now, as you can see behind me, it's filthy inside and it's even worse on the outside. So I'm gonna be cleaning it, but before I do that, by the way, I apologize for the roosters in the background. They are full of themselves and crow all day long. Anyway, so right before I get to cleaning it, I'm gonna go ahead and install this center console. Now, as many of you might know, Police interceptors don't come with a console usually from the factory uh, because usually the police department puts a console of their own uh, that they use for upfitting and installing light switches and siren controls and radios and all that other stuff that they have. Obviously, this vehicle was decommissioned after the wreck, and so it didn't come with a center console, which means no cup holders, and it also means nowhere to put your arm, uh, you know, an armrest. Uh, it has no storage there in the center, anything like that, and for a long road trip, we're going to want that. I could just go with a Ford um, center console from another uh, model, like an XLT or Limited or something like that, but those all had shifters in the center console uh, rather than on the column, which is what I've got. The, the interceptors all come with a column shifter. So with that being said, I found this one on eBay, a guy who makes consoles specifically for all sorts of decommissioned police vehicles, basically all the major uh, police vehicles used here in the U.S., and he makes them specifically to fit these vehicles. So I bought this, I'm gonna go ahead and get it installed, and then I'm gonna to get to cleaning on the Interceptor and get it ready for this road trip. Alrighty guys, well let me go ahead and show you how it turned out. It wasn't too bad for installation. Uh, a little finicky, but uh, got it all in there. It's really just four bolts, and uh, the guy who makes these is nice enough to provide all the bolts. Uh, mounts up to factory bolt positions, uh, so it's really not too big a deal. Got a couple of cup holders. I have already tested it. That one's big enough for a Gatorade bottle. That one's, of course, just can size, but uh, that's fine. Got a uh, armrest slash center compartment. Uh, pretty good size. I guess that's a place to hold some papers or something, maybe registration. And it's kind of cool. It's also got a hidden storage spot underneath. So that's uh, really pretty, co uh, pretty cool. So anyway, that is in. Uh, let me quickly show you some of the other things uh, that I got done the other day. Just a little bit closer up. You really can't see it, but I got the rocker panel trim back on. And then I got uh, the wheel well uh, trim as well as the uh, inner fender liner. And of course you can see I got my hubcaps on. Same thing over here. Of course this is a side that was wrecked. So uh, this was uh, definitely the worst side, but I've got my wheel well trim, my uh, fender liner. I uh, got the, the panel back on the door. Of course the rocker uh, trim as well and the hubcaps and all that. So it is looking mighty fine other than the fact that it's absolutely filthy. This thing is looking nice, and so now, uh, the last thing I'm gonna try to get to before the trip is go ahead and give it a good clean. I'm gonna start with the inside, and then, time permitting, we'll move to the outside.
All right, now I have done a thorough vacuum of the entire interior, including the seats. Uh, I am moving on to the floors, the walls, the glass, the dash, all that. Uh, I'm using just a few basic products, trying to channel my, my inner Stauffer garage. If you don't know who that is and you have any interest whatsoever in car detailing, I recommend you watch his channel. I will try to remember to leave a link below. But um, anyway, basically what I'm going to use is uh, silk and shine for the dash, for um, any of the hard plastic surfaces other than the floor. I'm going to try to use this stuff here. This is a multi-purpose uh, cleaner. I'm going to try to use that on uh, the floors. Um, it's a, it's a no rinse. You just wipe it away with uh, microfiber towels, which I have here. And of course, I'll also be using that uh, in conjunction with, with a variety of different bristle brushes on my drill. And then of course, I have some microfiber towels and some glass cleaner as well. So that's what I'm gonna work on. I'm gonna get to that now. And uh, I'll put you guys back on time-lapse. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> guys i had to run off to uh, an obligation this afternoon uh, but before i did i went ahead and got the interior mostly cleaned up uh, a few little things that i might want to detail like clean the windows a little bit better uh, maybe a few other little odds and ends but it is way better than it was before it's actually looking pretty good in here I had that nasty spot right there but that's all gone so things are much improved and I am ready almost ready to move to the exterior now I did go ahead and run it through a car wash because it just needed a little bit of help so I got the main grunge off by running it through the car wash and then now I'm gonna go ahead and work on it myself there's those roosters again I'm gonna go ahead and work on it and detail it up a little bit more I need to come around the back and get uh, the rest of the old decals off just the sticky stuff still on there. I've got some stuff that'll get that off and uh, May work on a few of these uh, Scuffs and things see if I can get those off with a polisher uh, a few things that the car wash didn't get off But in general, it's looking much improved So I'm gonna go ahead and get to work and get it all detailed up and put this thing to bed get it ready for the trip <laughs> Thank you. 
Alrighty guys, so we are on the road for our first trip with the Interceptor. Um, it's, it's a great start, it is pouring rain. Um, so, you know, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully it doesn't rain like this the whole way. But we're gonna take you along for the trip and we'll see how this goes. Our first long trip, it's a little over 500 miles each way. So it'll be a th over a thousand miles on this trip total. And we'll bring you along and keep you posted on how things are going. And uh, go ahead and smash that like button to wish us luck on this trip. We'll catch you a little further up the road. guys we're about an hour and a half into the trip and we have stopped for our first fuel up it wasn't full when we left so don't worry the gas mileage isn't that horrible uh, we're not quite out of the rain but we're way up toward the front of it so the rain is much lighter and I think as soon as we get back on the road another uh, 20 or 30 minutes and hopefully we'll be able to drive out of it and stay ahead of the rain the rest of the trip uh, at least that's what it looks like from the radar interceptors doing pretty well so far pleased with that and uh, just trying to learn uh, some of the idiosyncrasies of it and all of that. Uh, of course, we still don't have a back seat. Going to pick that up when we get to Maryland. Uh, but uh, just uh, trying to keep the dogs comfortable. Got the Greyhounds with us on this trip. I'll show them to you a little later on. Don't want to get them out right now because it's still raining, so I don't want to get them all wet and soggy and get them back in the car. Anyway, check up with you again very soon. We are in Ohio. We're actually on the eastern edge of Ohio, almost into West Virginia. Stopped here at a rest area to give everyone an opportunity to stretch their legs and use the restroom. And uh, well, the Interceptor is doing awesome. It's, uh, it's right over there. I'll show that to you here in a minute. And uh, boy, I'll tell you what, the weather sure has changed. It is a gorgeous sunny day now. Thankfully, we were able to run out ahead of that uh, rainstorm that's still moving east along with us, but we're out ahead of it now, and it's uh, mid-70s and gorgeous fall day. The fall colors are happening here in Ohio, as you can see behind me. Got a little video of that along the way as well, uh, so I hope you enjoyed seeing that. But uh, let me take you up here and introduce you to my two greyhounds. Tara and Journey. A lot of you have asked about them after I mentioned them uh, in the earliest, the first video about the Interceptor. So let me go ahead and show them to you real quick. And here they are. Erica is walking the girls, getting a little exercise. This is Journey and this is Tara. They're my, my senior girls. They're getting a little bit older, but they travel really, really well. And they appreciate stops like this where they get to stretch their legs a little bit. Girls, what do you think of the Interceptor? Better than BMW, isn't it? Well, I don't have a whole lot to say about it, but there you go. Some of you have been asking about the Greyhounds. There they are. Alrighty, so we're probably about halfway there. We're gonna go ahead and get back in the Interceptor and hit the road. It's doing really, really well so far. And uh, we'll update you again along the way if anything interesting or uh, scary happens with it. But uh, right now I've got pretty good confidence in it. I think it's gonna make it the rest of the way. So we'll update you soon.
I hope you enjoyed seeing that video, getting the Interceptor ready for a road trip and then taking it on a thousand mile plus trip uh, just mere hours after finishing getting it kind of more or less wrapped up. So I'm sorry that the actual road trip video kind of ends abruptly. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this opportunity to kind of tell you how it went and some of the things that I've done to the Interceptor since then. And uh, I guess also a few things that'll be coming up in the near future as well. All right, I'm going to go ahead and point the camera this direction because the Interceptor is better to look at than I am. So, how did the trip go? Well, as I mentioned in a prior video, spoiler alert, it did go very, very well. In fact, I have made that trip from Indiana to Maryland twice now. I took it there in the fall and then we went back to visit my family uh, around Christmas time. And uh, the, the trips have gone well both times. Now, the only real mishap that I had on the road trip was, uh, as you can see down here, yes, months later, I'm still being tacky and redneck, and I have these zip ties on here. Uh, that was one thing where I had to stop at a rest area uh, partway through, I don't remember, I might have been in Pennsylvania or West Virginia, I don't remember where I was. But in any case, we pulled off because I am missing, as you can see, a little trim piece. There's one on both corners here. And that trim piece connects uh, the inner wheel well and the lower bumper area. Everything kind of comes together there. And um, I knew I was missing that part. I just really didn't think much about it when, uh, when I was finishing everything up. And uh, well, as I was driving course at 70 miles an hour, the wind was dragging my wheel well liners down and rubbing the ground. So it was starting to uh, kind of rub a hole in them. So I stopped, got some zip ties and tacked those back up. And other than that, that's really the only thing I can say was a problem on the road trip. Other than these sagging wheel well liners where I had to put the zip ties on, the only other two things that I have had to kind of deal with uh, that I was dealing with on that road trip was number one, my steering was fairly sloppy. It was working, but uh, it was kind of, there was a lot of play in it and it was fairly sloppy. Uh, that ended up needing um, to be repaired because uh, the gear where the steering shaft goes into the rack, the electric uh, power steering rack, uh, was stripped out. So had to take care of that after the fact. That was annoying. Um, I don't know if that was a result of the accident or if that was a result of something I did. I honestly don't know, but one way or the other, had to replace that and to, to fix that problem. The other thing was I did not have working air conditioning. Now I had had it recharged because my uh, AC system of course got destroyed in the accident and I had a brand new condenser, brand new, uh, brand new um, compressor. But, uh, and I had it recharged, but one of the wiring harness uh, pigtails was ripped off in the accident and I had not identified that yet so I did not have working air conditioning. Thankfully this was late fall and it wasn't too warm uh, so that was not a problem and actually I just took care of that fairly recently. So I really didn't miss it through the colder weather but as we got here into the the warmer weather of spring uh, I did start missing that so I found um, a wiring harness pigtail actually off of the parts truck for the F-150 rebuild uh, that you'll see soon. Uh, but I found one there that I was able to wire in and now it has good working air conditioning and it feels fantastic. The one other thing that was taken care of on that road trip uh, was my back seat. You re probably remember from prior videos that this Interceptor did not have a back seat. A lot of uh, police departments pull those out and I found one on eBay that was a brand new pullout from another Interceptor and it was about only about a half an hour from where my family lives. Uh, so my mom was nice enough to go pick that up for me and while we were there my dad and my brother helped me install it and there it is. Now I was missing the two seat belts there in the middle for some reason the buckle was on that one but those two were missing and then I needed some big bolts went back there uh, to anchor the back of it down. So it was only kind of half installed for the trip back which is okay because I didn't really uh, have anyone in it so that's not a big deal. Uh, but I found a fella on a Facebook group who uh, works on interceptors in, upfitting, in an upfitting shop and he was able to send those out to me real cheap. So now I have three working seat belts, everything's bolted down as it should be, and I have a nice, basically brand new uh, rear seat here in the Interceptor. Looks fantastic and kind of finishes off that interior quite a bit. So other than fixing the AC and the power steering and uh, getting that seat installed, what else have I done to the Interceptor since the last video you saw? 
Well, I have had the front windows tinted. They look great here, all darkened up. Um, I think it really matches the aesthetic of the blacked out look here on the interceptor. So I had a local shop do that. I'm not into trying to do uh, tinting myself. That's just not something I have the patience for or really the time to learn. So I had those windows tinted. I have also added a remote start system to the interceptor. Um, I added a system that is not factory original, although you can get those. I got a system that uh, has an app with it so I can start it from my phone and it also interfaces with the factory remote so that I'm able to actually use the factory remote which doesn't have a remote start button but I'm able to use a sequence of button pushes uh, to start it uh, that way uh, which meant I didn't have to carry a second uh, remote around. So I added remote start to it, which was very, very nice here uh, in the winter, when, which we've just come through. It was great to have that and be able to get it warmed up before we went on road trips. Aside from that, I really haven't added much more to it. Yeah. So aside from these few things that I've just mentioned that I've added on, what is next for the Interceptor? Is it done? Well, obviously I still need to wrap up these little details like uh, those bumper corners and get rid of those uh, stupid looking and redneck looking uh, zip ties. But aside from that, that will be the last thing that uh, will finish the rebuild, if you will. But I also have a push bar for it that I'm gonna go ahead and get installed, uh, which is gonna really dress it up and make it look the part. It still has uh, the Ford, um, LED police spotlight on it uh, and it's pretty obvious between the spotlight and the steely wheels uh, that this was a police vehicle uh, but I need to go ahead and do that put that bar on that push bar on there and that will really dress it up and make it look the part I think this thing's just begging for a push bar other than that I really just need to do a little bit of paint work uh, well for starters over here you can see here on the sides of my door handles I've still got just a little bit of the uh, white wrap still on there uh, that I wasn't able to take off. So I'm gonna have to take the inner door panels off, take the handles off just to get that little bit. Got the same thing going on back here. Uh, so I'll take care of that. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, buff and polish the entire thing. It looks decent, but it doesn't look awesome. Uh, over here where we had these two panels painted, you can even see in the video, they're a little bit dull. Um, the hood and the bumper turned out great. These stayed a little bit dull. I think they just need to be sanded again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a polish on the whole thing uh, and make it look really, really sharp. And then I am going to ceramic coat the thing and really make it last and really make it pop and make it easy to keep clean. This is a black vehicle, which I have found, this being my first black vehicle, black vehicles are so hard to keep clean. So gonna get it looking really, really nice and ceramic coat it so that it will stay super clean. So between the things I've already done and the things I just mentioned that I need to do to the interceptor, really that's it. It will be done at that point. As you know, I am working on uh, a rebuild of a Ford uh, F-150, a new shop truck, but it's a super crew and it's big enough to actually be my permanent daily driver. I can haul the dogs in it. I can do long road trips in it. And uh, of course, do it, use it around town, haul my project cars, so on and so forth. So I really, unfortunately, don't need the Interceptor anymore and it will be available for sale very, very soon. Once I've got these things done, I'm gonna go ahead and part with the Interceptor. I'll be able to use that money toward the F-150 rebuild or other projects coming up as well. Um, so that's really kind of the end of the story. I do have one more video coming on the Interceptor showing you all of the things uh, that I just said that I'm gonna do, kind of getting it finished up and wrapped up, and then that will be kind of the end of the Interceptor story here on the Crossroads Rebuild channel. So guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a little bit of a longer one. I hope you enjoyed the road trip and you can know that, well, it might be a little bit risky taking a vehicle you just rebuilt on a long road trip. At least for me, it worked out well with this Interceptor. Stay tuned for the upcoming video of getting this thing finished. Uh, the next video you're gonna see is actually the teardown video uh, for the F-150, getting it all prepped for the frame shop where it is actually right now uh, over there getting worked on. So stay tuned for that as well. Uh, I have uh, multiple videos coming on the F-150. Of course, I've also got uh, the Cheap Jag, the Civic, and other things coming as well. So lots of content coming to the Crossroads Rebuild channel. Guys, I've noticed that so many of you who are watching uh, are not subscribed, and I thank you for watching, but do me a favor, go ahead and click the subscribe button, and if you would, go ahead and also click that bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos. That would really help me out, and that would really help out the channel and the algorithm, al al wow, can't speak, the algorithm.
algorithm here on YouTube, and uh, I'd really appreciate that. So stay tuned for videos coming up. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, well, I guess we'll see you in the next video. about an hour and a half into the trip made our first stop for fuel up Erica's in the back <laughs>